Hi, I'm Mike Henry, and this is my Procreate 4.3 demo for the piece I call Brad Needs a Vacation. So this piece was done at the last Sketch Bomb. Uh, as I've been saying in previous videos, the big challenge I've been trying to put myself under when I do some of these is to do a fully uh, colored rendered piece uh, in a limited amount of time. And since Sketch Bomb has an automatic time limit on it, uh, it's kind of a fun opportunity to do so. Um, also, there's always three themes at Sketch Bomb, and at the, the way we run it now in Barcelona, which is different than the way we used to run it back in San Francisco, is you can do one of the themes, all of the themes, uh, just a couple, it doesn't matter, it's, just, it's not about doing all of them in a set, um, sort of like segmented amount of time. We say, yeah, you can do uh, one or all or two in the whole three hours that the thing is on for. So. Uh, I use that opportunity to just try and do one and try to um, get it fully colored and there are some other members like Susie Bouillon who she every time tries to take all three uh, themes and mash them into one and I always think that that's like the coolest thing ever and she does a better job a way better job of it than I do um, so when I was in the middle of doing this I decided that I was just going to focus on one of the themes but then I kind of found like some excuses to jam the other two in so this technically has all the themes in it but it definitely wasn't designed that way not as well as like what Susie does um, but anyways the themes for this day was alien um, responsibility and summer. Uh, it was just starting to get hot in Barcelona and so it was kind of fun to do a summer themed one. So you can see what I did at the beginning was just focus on the alien side of it uh, but then I threw in like the cigarette and I was like oh maybe I can hint at responsibility like he's totally stressed out uh, which so I guess you could say this speaks more to stress than responsibility but sort of you know one one begets the other um, so he and then I and then I have him sweating like he's stressed out and it's hot out and he's an alien so as you can see the the thinnest connection um, between the three but I, I I'm gonna call it a win even though it's not the, the most thorough combination of all of them so I started with him as red. I didn't do this for any process reason since you saw that he ends up green. I didn't do this because it was like, oh, it's easier to paint in red and then convert it. I just wanted him to be red in the beginning. And then uh, I didn't really like the way that was going. I do think that he looks cool red, but I think that just to really get, to, to lean into the alien thing, he, start, he slowly started becoming other colors. And I was trying to balance all of these colors uh, fairly uh, quickly because this was all done like I said in a time limit so I didn't have time to really agonize over everything uh, similar to other pieces that you've seen uh, where I tried to do them in a in a small amount of time I did them in in that time and then I gave it like another 15 minutes or so of uh, tweaking and cleaning up I don't know if I can remember when that was when that like change happens when like it stops and then I do a little bit of cleanup later but we'll see if we can identify that as we watch uh, you can also see here that we've got the his like eyelids trying to add a little bit more emotion there but I actually just kind of felt like they weren't working I think that was more just limited by my ability to make them work especially because I was thinking quick and trying to generate this quickly so that those eventually go away I just wasn't really selling them in the way that I wanted to so I just went back and double checked my uh, images and I actually saved out stages of this so I will be able to show sort of the stage that it was at when I wrapped it up for Sketch Bomb and then the 15 minutes I spent later that day. Uh, since I don't spend the entire time uh, drawing or painting at Sketch Bomb and it's a three hour event, I would say that this guy took roughly two and a half, two and a quarter to two and a half hours and then an extra 15 minutes on top of that. Since people are always asking how long things take. So you can see what we've got here. Uh, we've got basically like every color possible. And I think that that is still where we end up with it, where there's lots of colors. And I think that's also really what I was going for since the character is supposed to be over the top and loud and goofy and he's an alien. And I wanted to give him this like 80s vibe to the way he was dressed and everything. So I knew that he was going to be really colorful. But the color balance that we're seeing here just doesn't feel super great. I think that the hair color with the skin color works well, and I think that even though green complements red, it's just that eye color is not really working for me, probably because it's housed in the yellow and there's something about that that's just not exactly working. So you'll see that these colors are going to change dramatically as time goes on. 
So I'm going to try and capture certain stages of this that so that we can just highlight them. Um, they're not 100% honest in the fact that they're not necessarily snapshots. A couple of them are snapshots, but then a couple of them are also just with some layers turned off to try and show, try to highlight different stages, but um, I'll, I'll sort of speak to them when we get there, but it's nice to sort of take a pause and show uh, essentially what is big decision points uh, because there, when you're in the middle of doing your process and you're sort of going and going and going, um, there are aspects of it that are they're not robotic, but they're, since they're so process driven and they're so like, I've done this before, I'm going to replicate this technique, you are kind of like in the trenches. And then every now and then you get these moments to kind of breathe and survey everything and figure out what the next big thing you're going to do is. And then that could be planning out the next half an hour, that could be planning out the next three hours, depending on what you're doing. Um, so that's what those snapshots will represent. So you can already see that we've had a major shift to the color palette. He's now in this sort of uh, sea foamy green, green blue uh, range. And we're just uh, continuing with the flatting process. As I go, I'm making little decisions. Now I could just flat the whole thing in whatever colors I want and then balance it later, but I'm trying to balance it in the, in the middle of it because I can also sort of come up with a little bit more of a story as I'm going. You know, for instance, this character I mean, he's an alien, but his shirt and his jacket and his hat could be any multitude of colors, and that could mean that could communicate a very different character depending on how you do that. And so that's what another thing that I'm searching for is sort of like the the story that I can tell just through color. So here we're coming up on our first snapshot right here. So this is the end of the flatting process, sort of. Um, there's a lot more tweaking that ends up going on uh, as the painting happens, but this gives us a bit of our blueprint as far as the artistic direction as well as what I'll be using technically for things like selections and the, the start of my shapes and all of that type of stuff. So let's keep going. You can see that the eyelids are still there right now, but the, the eyelids will eventually just go away. Now I'm starting the to actually put my first shadow layer down. You can see that on the cigarette and in the jacket now. The layer stack, I don't remember exactly what it was. It was slightly messy because I was going quickly and I was just, you know, sort of filling it in as I went and having to keep track of it. Sometimes that's actually a little bit of a problem because I think that in art we're always kind of looking for handles on the piece that we're working on so that we can grab them and we can understand what we're doing and we can control it. I think that's the entire reason uh, why you see an artist just start putting some sort of bullshit lines on the paper even if the drawing ends up not going in that direction at all. It's just this, this ability to sort of break the seal and start doing something and then working with that. It's like figuring out your the spatial relations of like the canvas and what kind of shapes you're playing with and all that kind of stuff. I think the same thing happens when you do something like this and you get to the shadow layer because you want to lay the shadow on sort of like the biggest shape so that you can start establishing uh, a majority of the lighting for it. However, so that for in this case that would be like his, his skin. Um, however, in this one, because of the way the layers are set up, it's like the cigarette and the jacket and the shirt, which are very small elements on the overall piece. In fact, that part of lighter purple hair, there you go, just got shaded in right there. I mean, that's a very insignificant piece and it's like the fourth or fifth uh, level of the flats with the shadow layers that we're doing uh, to, to be addressed. So it just sort of shows that there are there is actually a reason to order your flats in certain ways if in fact you're looking for something like that that type of a handle to hold on to. Like I want to tackle a big chunk of this so that I understand the whole thing but if you're going with like a method like I use you are a little bit locked into the order that you put those layers in. It's not the biggest thing, it's not a, a big detriment, and it's actually really easy if you find that that's a problem for you. It's easy to prioritize the way you put your layers together, um, but when you're moving really quickly and you're just trying to get something done, you don't always have that luxury. Now, for the shadow layers on this piece, um, they are done with a very desaturated brown. In fact, it might even be totally gray. I can't 
really remember. I was trying to go for quite a neutral lighting in the beginning, and then there's going to be a phase where I switch up the shadows all to be way more saturated, because even though I liked the look of it, I wanted a little bit more of an atmosphere to the piece. So you'll see here I'm doing the sort of like direct light shadow layer, um, and then I'm going to be doing the uh, the sort of ambient occlusion like form shadow layer and they're both going to be really desaturated and neutral and I and I think it looks pretty neat but it doesn't ultimately get me like to the part where I'm like really excited about the piece uh, so you'll see much later we end up adjusting that um, it might go without saying, but you know, every video is somebody's first video. Uh, this is done, as the title said, in Procreate, and the brush that I'm using for the entirety of this is the Turpentine brush, uh, which I believe is in the painting section of the brushes. Uh, if you have never watched one of my videos before, I try to. In fact, I think with Procreate, I 100% use brushes that are in the app. I might tweak them a little bit here or there because I want them to do something slightly different, uh, but I try to use everything that's just that just comes with it. Procreate is very cool because you can put in lots of really cool brushes and you can figure all that stuff out like you do in Photoshop and it's really nice and versatile. But for me, I just always usually use whatever is stock in a program. Um, also, if this is your new uh, excuse me, if this is the first time you've ever watched the channel. The method that I used, that, that I sort of coined to move through all these layers and do this uh, shadow technique is called Select Paint, Select Clear. And uh, I should, I guess that maybe I should come up with a better name for it because that really has never rolled off the tongue. But anyways, it's linked down below, a more detailed description of it. Uh, but the simple explanation, which might not make it understandable, but it's the simplest way to explain it, is there's a shadow layer or multiple shadow layers on top of all of the flat layers, and I go from bottom to top of those flat layers using them to select and then paint on the shadow layer, and then go up to the next one and select and clear, and then paint on, and then select it again and paint, paint on the shadow layer. And the reason is, is what we're doing is we're using each flat to trap the area that we want to paint in, and then because it we're going to the next one up. If we select that one and clear it, that means that we are clearing any type of overlap that the previous uh, painting on the other, uh, using the other layer as a selection created. I just said that I was gonna explain that simply and I feel like that did not at all explain it. So I highly recommend checking out that other video. It'll explain it a little bit more with an actual demonstration of it, and I think that once you get the hang of it, it's really easy, um, but it's more about just like a method of working that involves establishing some amount of control as to where the paint's going. And when you're dealing with something like this brush, even though you want it to have a messy quality to it, it is also somewhat unpredictable, and so it's really nice to use this method to, to control that. Also, I should mention for those of you who maybe have started watching my channel recently, I don't always paint in this style. It's just the way that I've been doing it lately because it's very quick. It's a modification of how I've painted in the past um, when I've done like a, a really cartoony thing where I've got like just really clean flats, maybe even line work, and I'm putting a shadow layer on it. Uh, I use the same method when I'm doing that as well, and then I use that method. Basically whenever I'm using like a unified shadow layer, I use that method. Uh, but if I were doing it in a more color pick way, uh, where like let's say the skin has four different layers and each one of those layers is a different color and I'm building up the shadows and the midtones and the highlights. Uh, I don't use select paint select clear in that method because I don't have a unified shadow layer or a unified lighting layer. I have several for each component of the piece. So if you go back and you look at a piece of mine like um, Shockwave Alberto, it might be Shocking Alberto, it's a character from Giant Robo, but if you go through my channel or search for Alberto, I think you'll find it. Um, and uh, there's, there's plenty of other ones too, but that one I think is just really clearly that type of a piece. Um, you can see that method, and that method is much more, I think, what people would consider standard, where it's like, there's a hand folder, and the hand folder has like a dark, a mid, 
um, high and maybe a, a highlight or something like that. And then there's like a, a jacket, a suit layer, and the suit has whatever, you know, that type of a thing. So at this point in the piece, what's running through my head at Sketchbomb is I like where it's going and I really like the way like the shadows look under his mouth and parts of his like jacket and shirt, but I really did not like the way the color was playing on his eyeballs. It's just way too desaturated and it makes that part feel dead. And I think that the eyeballs should have less shadow on them in general. Uh, they're a little bit more luminous. And so we do address that eventually. Um, and I, I, at this point I'm trying to figure out like how I actually solve that problem. So you can see I'm also throwing the some of the shine layers on. I've got, basically what we're looking at here is we've got some of the local color, like having that patterning on his face has been put in. We're putting these shines on his eyes and there's reflections on his eyes. He's in a city somewhere, so I tried to make the reflection look vaguely like a city. Um, and we've got two shadow layers on, and that is really what we're dealing with. Oh, and now a highlight layer is going in right now. You can see on the on his hair tentacles and stuff like that. Um, so we're going through and adding that where it makes sense. Um, that, I believe, ultimately ends up being a overlay layer that's set to like a white, uh, maybe even like a slight white blue, but all of that will get changed eventually when we sort of start readdressing uh, the lighting. You can see also I just changed the patterning on his face to being dark, and now I'm adding, it's not five o'clock shadow, it's more just like a patterning, but it gives an implication of five o'clock shadow. Putting it on the tentacles, it's also just an alien patterning, but it gives it an implication of almost like bags under the eyes. Um, here, by the way, is another freeze frame, so let's talk about this for a second. What I did here was I just turned off the highlight layers because this technically is a stage where I would start making some decisions, which is what happened, but I kind of missed that stage, so I just turned them off in order to snapshot this real quick. This is where I'm looking at some flats and I'm trying to decide whether or not this is the color scheme. I'm taking stock of the different materials I have and trying to think about how I want to represent them. That's why I mentioned things like the, how luminous the eyes could be, um, as well as trying to think about like how glossy the eyes are. Are the teeth going to be shiny or are they more dull? Um, since he's a little slack jawed, maybe he's been mouth breathing a bunch and his mouth, his teeth aren't wet. Um, and then his, his hair, since it's these weird tentacle things, material. So that's kind of what I'm processing at this point. So we'll keep it going now. We're going to add things like rim lights on certain things, reflective light on certain things. Uh, the eyes, obviously, we want to be more reflectant than the... Um, skin or the tentacles of the hair uh, but then there are nice opportunities like where the light theoretically would kind of bounce off the skin we could illuminate that underside of that hat a little bit so just trying to find little opportunities here or there to represent the materials um, how I want them to be um, so what you just saw there was me taking all the layers that are the flats merging them into one layer and then making it black. I then set that on top of everything and lowered the opacity of it and started to like erase away so that we could um, get a little bit of a uh, shadowing, like a vignetting on his actual body and, and turn his form just a little bit more by adding that there. Now we have a rim light coming off from the side. Uh, again, the purpose of these things is because A, that's to some degree how they would work in real life so and we want to represent that but what it does to our brain when we have like the shadows that represent the form and then we've got like a shadow that that really um darken sort of like the edges and then we've got like a rim light coming in from the side these are all just ways that we try to push the dimension of the figure and so by throwing these things in uh and we want to by, by, sorry, by throwing these things in, it helps us to communicate that form. But there are different ways that we can do that. We can do it super artificially, like it looks like right here, where you've just got like this big, thick rim light coming in from nowhere, and there's no indication of that light anywhere else. You can also make it look like it's a little bit more part of the actual environment. There's lots of ways that you can do that. I mean, photography, for instance, like uh, fashion photography, they do false lighting all the time, where they're deliberately reflecting something that isn't actually there, uh, that type of a thing. So that's what we want to do here as well, because we know that that is appealing to our brain and that it, it makes uh, it, it also rounds out the forms a lot more 
You can see that we went through some crazy background colors. They were really distracting from he himself. He's he's very colorful and crazy, so why do we need to spice things up with like a wild background? Um, and we're going through and adding just little stylistic things that for me just really interest me and I think they're fun, like having that slightly dark outline around him and making sure that the smoke was like smeared enough so that it looks like it's trailing off. Uh, eventually what we're going to add here is the sweat so that we can pull in that summer side which also emphasizes the nervousness and the responsibility. Um, I'm going to talk about it before it actually starts laying down just so that I can get all of the information out. The sweat is done by using white and I just paint them in as these big droplets. Um, I'm very influenced when it comes to materials like that by an uh, American Surrealist painter named Todd Shore. And I'm not saying I mimic exactly what he does, but I'd love to be able to communicate it the same way that he does. And I try to find little shortcuts to get there. So I'm going with these big cartoony shapes that are just white. And then I lower the opacity on those. And then I also put like a white halo around them. So I'm trying to there sell the sort of glassiness about it. There's a little black there to show a shadow that's actually being cast by the water on his skin. And then there's also a highlight going into there uh, to really emphasize the, the, the point of the sweat drop that is catching that highlight. So we're freezing on this for a bit now uh, because this is another stage where everything sort of stopped and I was taking stock of everything. Uh, this is almost where I was at at the end of Sketch Bomb. The next freeze frame we, we're going to do is when uh, I called it quits at Sketch Bomb and said, okay, it's done. Um, you can see right now we still have the problem with the eyeballs where the eyeballs have a really black desaturated shadow that's just taking away from some of their shape and some of their luminosity and I want to fix that. Um, and there's also some skin stuff that I would like to eventually adjust. You can sort of see as this piece goes, which you're going to see subsequently, that his skin goes from a more blue-green towards a more yellow-green. And that was just sort of a natural push towards both harmonizing it as well as keeping the skin separate from the shirt. Because uh, I want that to definitely feel uh, like they're not related, like he's an alien who put on clothes that he likes and that he's not necessarily coordinating that like with his skin because he's he's just a dude who likes to wear those clothes you know what I mean so now we'll continue the last part here is just some really fast tweaks we're gonna see some of the colors change like I just did we're gonna see some lighting and little tw uh, tweaks to like some of the highlights but we're gonna mostly see the shadows get a little more saturated and we're gonna see me erase away some of the shadows on the eyeball so that I can try and lighten that entire thing you can see right now already by changing those uh, shadows to be a little bit more saturated and a little lighter in value we've really fixed a lot of what's going on with those eyes there and the skin and stuff is unaffected or positively affected with those adjustments as well we freeze now on this because this is where I was at at the end of Sketch Bomb. This is the one that I, I called done at the time, but I knew that it wasn't ultimately going to be. I was probably going to be tweaking it further. Um, and I'm happy with this, but I knew with a few more minutes of just sort of reflection and additional tweaking, I could get further. So here we are now addressing it again. So I've turned off a bunch of the lighting layers and I'm just getting down to sort of readjusting some of the colors and getting this where I want it to be. Also cleaning up things like the, look how the pupils are all different sizes and they're not necessarily laid in there really well. Um, and so there's also like the lines on the tentacles that his eyes are connected to that don't really fit the form very well. So I go back in and I just sort of clean those up a little bit as well. Little tweaks like that um, across the board, I think take it to um, not necessarily like a whole new level, that's pretty dramatic, but more like, just a place where I'm happier with it. I scrubbed back and forth a bunch for the last like five seconds or 10 seconds of video trying to find all the little changes and make sure I was zooming in on them. And honestly, I couldn't find all of them. So let's just say that if you wanna see them all, you can view this at 1080p and probably try to spot them all and, and you'll probably see something meaningful there. Um, for his like face patterning, I thought it was a little distracting. So I wanted to soften it a little bit, which you see here, I'm just literally going in and smearing it, taking away some of the more Define blotchiness and just making it softer overall. Uh, and then now we're at the point where you're going to see a lot of little lighting changes. The layers are going to turn back on, but I'm going to be switching them to different layers, uh, blend modes, um, as well as, like I said, the little cleanup around like the iris and uh, 
excuse me, not the iris, the pupil of the eye and things like that. So you can see there, the, the lighting layer is turning back on, changing to different modes. This is me just trying to make sure that the look is exactly what I'm looking for and that all of the flats and the adjustment layers, well, they're not adjustment layers, but the lighting layers that are reactive to the colors that are underneath because they're all multiplies or overlays or just low opacity, um, that they're all reacting positively to some of the changes that I'm making. Here's some uh, iris cleanup happening now, or pupil, I don't know why I keep saying iris. Uh, turning on some of these layers again, starting to see how they all play together, uh, experimenting with some other colors and flipping them back and forth to see which ones I like the most. And this is the color that I end up settling on. And so as you can see from where we started very early in the piece, the whole thing is actually shifted a bit more yellow. Uh, but then because we've got that nice red purple hair and the nice blue shirt, there's, there's interesting color play happening. Okay, turning everything off and on again, making sure all my last bits of layers are adjusted to the right color, and now we reach the end. This is the final piece, and now I know that towards the end there, it was a lot of just sort of like, what the fuck is even happening in this piece, because it's all just really uh, minor, it seems, uh, but really it's just me going through and tweaking a bunch of small elements. I think ultimately will add up because even though most people view these images on like Instagram, I view them on my iPad and when people see them in person, they see them on the iPad and they're much larger, you see much more detail and I want to make sure that it holds up at larger sizes. So let's go through the major steps again just because it's kind of cool to see those transitions. So here's the rough sketch. This is where we started at, where we made the decision that it seemed like it would be interesting enough to keep going, uh, but there is some silhouette problems like with that top right eye. Here we fixed that silhouette problem we started laying in all the flat or we have laid in all the flats and started deciding on what are the actual colors that this guy is going to be. Here we've got our first shadow layers laid in, so we're starting to get a lighting scheme and we're starting to identify what colors we may need to change so that it all plays together more nicely. Here the background's been put in, more lighting, the sweat, reflective materials, that type of stuff. Here we're getting closer to our final color scheme, we've solved some of our shadow problems and everything is getting a little bit closer to a cool look. And then here is the final version with the right colors, everything feels like it's playing nicely together and we've got all the materials and details tweaked and it feels pretty good. And I'll do a slower pan so that you guys can see the details while I thank everybody for watching. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy this material, please subscribe to the channel, please like. Actually, please comment because I like having conversations um, on all the videos. It's just really fun for me to interact with people who have uh, seen this stuff because uh, it's, it's just very uh, rewarding. It's actually the main reason I do it because I can tell you this channel is not making me rich. This is all just for fun. And if you're looking for me on the internet, these are places in which you can find me.